Hello and welcome. Today we would like to talk about voice recognition um, with Python 3 and its use in Autodesk Mirror 2021. My name is Simon Nagel and I would like to introduce you to my colleague and Python expert Ludwig Barth, with whom we realized that recent project. Hi, I'm Ludwig Barth. Well, we all know virtual reality allows us to jump over the barrier to the digital easily. Um, the access to complex digital data can be simplified by using VR as there is no need of any software know-how at all. That is why VR and VR collaboration are an important part, not only in the current design review process. In VRED, this works out of the box and the visual appearance of digital data is amazing. So it already helps to improve collaboration and decision-making. VRED offers a standard set for collaboration and interacting with the scene to change variants, viewpoints, to measure, to teleport, and to collaborate in general. With the new integration of Python 3, almost everything else can be customized for your needs. With Python 3, you now have access um, to various libraries that make the creation of interactive experiences with VRED even more straightforward. So, for example, you could write something to create notes, write something to sketch or draw, even in collaboration and obviously also in VR. You can manipulate or move objects, or you could do other things like a live analysis of the structure of your scene and everything else, of course. The only limit in that process is your imagination. So, we have seen great usage among our customers and made our learnings while hosting um, more than a thousand guests in our Munich VR Center of Excellence. And there was one thing we noticed. Nevertheless, how well any of those actions in VR are working, they are still based on the fact that the user has to take a physical action, even if that action is just pressing a button on your controller or doing a hand gesture. Um, in some occasions, that's not so helpful, because just imagine what if you would like to document that information how do you write in VR? How do you type in VR? Um, or what if you would like to make a change in a variant in your scene and you would like to keep focus on a certain object so you don't want to open a menu to change from A to B? Well, of course, um, somebody else could do that for you. It is great to have an assist in a site. And luckily, it cannot be always the case. And obviously, um, this creates dependency and is a challenge in current times where virtual co-working takes place everywhere. So. Um, could this assistant be virtual? We're working virtual anyway, so could that be an option? So virtual assistants are usually based on speech recognition, which is already part of our life. So probably it was used by most of you when driving a car, when dictating text messages, or when giving commands in your smart home. Turn light on, turn light off. So there are multiple technologies already on the market, which are working very well already. There's also a Python API for speech recognition. And Python can be accessed in VRED 2021. So we thought of combining both of it together. And um, we just thought, wouldn't it be great to just say a command and see the result in VR? For example, select headlights. Or wouldn't it be great to just leave a comment in VR? and document it in a text-based format, just like The mirror looks great. Stop. Or wouldn't it be great to compare multiple different design options without losing sight of the small differences on screen? For example, saying Variant yellow Variant black metallic Wouldn't it be also cool to make precise adjustments like Move up 10 So wouldn't it be great to just make changes in your scene just by the sound of your voice? Well, as mentioned, this is actually possible by using Python 3 in VRED 2021 and we would like to show you now, live, um, how this is working what you have to do in advance, and, well, how it can be used. Enjoy. Okay, so let's, yeah, let's go hands-on, let's show it live. In general, um, as mentioned before, it's not a feature of VRED, so it's realized via Python 3, 
and um, Python 3 can use different libraries. First of all, you have to do some initial setup. You can go to that link we provided below and you can just look it through the installation guide on how to install Pi Audio and Pi um, Speech Recognition. Okay. Afterwards, you can go to the repository and just look at the different Python scripts and copy paste them to your VRED. So there's one script for making annotations only, via voice, one script that can be used as a control panel where you can customize your own functions and one where you have both functions in one. In that case, I'm going to use this one and I will copy and paste the entire script like this, copy, paste to my VRED application and afterwards, um, here we go, and afterwards the script is in here and I can run and execute it like this. Afterwards, I get a very short explanation in my VRED terminal, which can be read over here, which tells me which buttons to press and how to proceed. In general, the procedure is quite simple. In that scenario, you have to press a button, say something, I see an action. So for example, I could go to my mirror, for example, to um, create an annotation. Because as mentioned before, if I'm in a collaboration session and I would like to document something, what I am saying, it's always a challenge in how to do this. And in this scenario, I could just say, here we go, this mirror looks great. Awesome. Stop. So you have noticed that the words were constantly added to that annotation, no matter how long I'm talking, until I say the word stop. The great thing is that it's even detecting what my username is and what the date and the current um, time is. And this information is taken into account for my collaboration. So in this case, my name is Simon, I have a certain color and the date and time is just taken for my system. If multiple people are in a collaboration session and are working together, you can always see those VRED annotations from the other person as well. So in this scenario, I'm logged in as Ludwig. And Rudwig notices, for example, this license plate is out of date. Stop. So in this scenario, I said something else for another person. And again, voice recognition was working fine and was adding this annotation over here. Now, the cool thing is, going back to both scenes, that I actually see both annotations in both scenes because it's a standard VRED feature that they are synchronized for the entire time. So for that use case, I'm just using my um, voice recognition to understand the text and put this into the annotations. Um, let's say we would finish this collaboration session. So I go to here, I end it. So collaboration session is finished. And I would like to keep the documentation of what was said during the meeting. So I can go to my Explorer and there's automatically a file saved, an XML file. I can look at the file and I can read. Um, okay. I can, I can read the file for some reason. It's not opening now. Okay. Now it's working. So um, I can read the information from that annotation. So for example, the mirror looks great. Stop. And this license place is out of date. Stop. And I also have information about the position, about the color, and who said what. So I could easily reuse that information from that XML file to, um, um, to proceed working. Okay, so our initial idea was actually just documenting what was said during a VR meeting. That was the, official, the initial driver. But after some time, we noticed, well, if the text detection is working so well, we could technically use this for other things. So let's just say I would like to select something in my scene. How could I do this? Wouldn't it be just great if I could just say what I would like to select and then just say a corresponding action? For example, select Windows. And it's working totally fine, as you see. So the windows right now are selected. So you might have noticed I just stopped talking. And after, whenever I stop talking, my data is actually um, uploaded and analyzed and I get a string back. So you can actually see what I was just saying. So I can read all those words. And you might now also ask the question, why, how does the data set know where the windows are? And this is obviously in the, in the scene graph. So in the VRED scene graph, there is the um, information 
about a certain node, so there's a node which is called Windows. So as long as a node has a certain name, I can just easily select it by its name. So you can read there are also nodes for headlights, for a car, for mirror and so on. So if I would, for example, select the headlights, I can just go for pressing the button and pressing the button, select headlights. And then I select the headlights. So selecting is one thing, and obviously it doesn't make sense for a desktop application because you can just select it. But in VR, it's probably a little, a little bit more of a challenge on what to select. And especially if I'm in VR, for example, it might be the case that I would just like to focus on only those headlights. So in that scenario, I could just say, isolate start. And the object is being isolated. To end this mode, I could also just say, hey, please, isolate stop. So in the end, I have just a multiple arrangement of words, which is detected as a certain function in VRED. I will discuss about this in a minute, which will do a certain action in VRED. So we thought about different use cases. And one use case that came to our mind was maybe making slight adjustment for different parts to see the difference, for example, in the, um, in the gap analysis. Like how close should objects be together to and how does it look like? So in that scenario, we said, well, let's first of all select hood. So the hood should be selected at the very moment. And afterwards, you can just say um, that you would like to move up, left, right the hood. So in that scenario, move down 11. And you see that it was actually translated in the scene by a certain amount of millimeters. So I could say something again. Move up 13. And you've seen it's just working without touching it. So again, probably for a desktop mode, it doesn't make sense. I could just type in 13. But if we are in VR, it's quite difficult to define precise um, def uh, define this precise actions. So actually something else also came to our mind because we all know VRED and VRED is a, is a software which gives you the option to easily create different variants or configurations or certain design alternatives. And in VRED they are called variants. So we have an amount of variants in our scene that have certain names. For example, I have a variant for, um, for black metallic, for yellow, white, whatsoever. So I can change the color of my car. So wouldn't it be great that if I was in VR, if I could just execute those variants? So we also wrote a very short function for this, which can basically do that. So I just need to call the name of the variant to execute it. So the idea is variant yellow, variant black metallic. And that's also it's also working pretty good. So in the end, I'm just saying the keyword, which is variant. And afterwards I say the argument, which in this case is the name of the variant. It also should work for other variants. So in that scenario, I think there's a variant for changing the position of the front wheel. So I could just say wheel position. Ah, so you understood me wrong. So that's a good point. So you can see he understood will position. So speech recognition is only as good as it is. It's not always, it's not perfect in all cases. And I think the variant is not called will position. The variant is called will position. And you have to say the keyword variant in advance. So the idea is variant will position. And you have seen that there was an action in the scene. So the variant was also called. So in the end, a variant can also consist of multiple names and the script will also work at the same time. So, um, well, we noticed all these functions, but we, we thought it would also be great if we would create a script framework, which would allow you to customize it easily. So if we take a look at the script, don't want to bore all people who are not interested in scripting but now, but I think it's still important to just understand how this concept is working. So in general, um, you can see over here 
that we can register certain keywords. So for example, I have a keyword for move, where I can move objects, or a keyword for select, where I can obviously select objects, for variant, rotate, isolate, viewpoints, and so on. In the end, you can just customize this for your need. You could just create your own keyword and you could add a corresponding function. So for example, for select, we have a function which is called our select function. And this function is just technically giving the argument, which is the word I say after select. So select window, select headlights and so on. So in the end, the function is just calling a Python function, which is selecting a node. And the argument is the word that I was saying earlier. We notice that speech recognition is working very, very well, but still there might be some problems. So sometimes whenever I say move, roof is understood, or moon, or whenever I say variant, um, radiant, or even Marian is understood. So we also defined that even if we say radiant, so if we say Marian, the same function for variant will also be applied. So um, if you would like to create your own function, just copy and paste this line of code, add your own keyword to it, create your own function and add your own argument. Technically, there's no limit. Technically, you can do everything in VRED, um, which is accessible via Python, which should basically just work fine. Of course, we should all think about proper use cases because selecting objects doesn't make sense in a desktop mode. I could just click on the button in VR, it's another story. So we think probably one of the key use cases for now is being in VR and just switching between different different variants um, or adding annotations, which both is working pretty much fine. But I'm sure that there are so many use cases that we did not think about um, right now. Two last things. So in general, um, the speech recognition of Google is uh, capable of supporting multiple uh, libraries. So right now we are connecting to Google over here and this could be replaced to other um, uh, libraries which are also available as well and it's also quite interesting that i can easily just change the language so right now the language is defined to be um, english us english but as we see here we could also easily change it to um to german french so whatever is also available in the in the google library and i would like to show this briefly how this can be done so for example let me just change this uh to german which is de for deutsch De. All right, so I will rerun the script right now. Perfect, this seemed to work fine. And now I would like to make an annotation, which I speak in German. So probably many people will not understand me, but I will just say um, this worked perfectly, something like that. Das hat wunderbar funktioniert. Stop. Perfect. So actually the German um, speech recognition was also working fine. So it's just telling me um, this worked pretty well. In the end, um, yeah, so in a nutshell, um, speech recognition just means that text is analyzed and sent to VRED. So whatever you do with that, it's up to you, it's your choice. And our Python script is just offering you a framework um, that can make your everyday life easier, I guess. So just let us know what you do with it. Have a great day. Bye.